Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, in this tutorial, we will be looking at uh, the pointer data operations available in uh, Fortran. Now, what is a pointer? Now, pointer is actually a data type which stores the address of other data type. Okay. Now, this may be a little confusing. I'll explain again. What does a pointer do? See, pointer is just like uh, just like all other data types it is another data type okay now what it does is that instead of storing some value like some variable value and stuff okay what it does is that it stores the value okay it stores the address of some other value okay and now what it does is now because of that because of that it has access to that variables address as well as the va value okay now uh, enough of me explaining that I'll explain in the guys in a simple way that you guys can understand see uh, look at this function decl program declaration over here okay see this variable x1 and these these are variables x1 and x2 these are integers okay they each have their own value okay now p1 and p2 p3 p4 these four val variables are integers at the same time these four are actually pointers okay now the thing is p1 is associated with x1 okay they are linked p1 and x, x1 are linked together so what p1 does is that it stores the address where the address location of x1 p2 is associated with x2 so it stores the address value of x2 similarly p3 stores the address of x3 and p uh, p4 again because of this command it stores the address of x3 again so what happens is that p1 and p1 uh, since it stores the address of x1 okay uh, it uh, can also access the value of x1 similarly p2 can uh, stores the address of x2 and it also accesses it can, it can also access the value of x2 so likewise p3 and p4 also does the same so uh, now there is a point you have to keep in mind okay see as far as fortran is con concerned Maybe I for that any point any language for that for that matter, any language for that matter. Okay, a pointer can only point to a single variable. Okay, whereas a variable can have many pointers. Um, it's like this. Okay, uh, a credit card or a debit card. Okay, has only one user. Okay, whereas one user can have multiple debit cards or multiple credit cards. Simple as that. Okay. Just like that, or else you can also say this another way. Just like uh, how a ho house has just one owner, okay, can all always have one owner, but a person can have multiple houses. Like that, this is how it goes. A variable has only ha can have many pointers pointing to it, whereas a pointer can have only one variable pointing pointed by it. Okay, that's the simple explanation. Because of that, okay. P1, if it is already pointing x1, it cannot point to other variables like x2 or x3. Whereas x3 can be pointed by p3 at the same time p4, and if possible p1, and also by p and also by p2. So the thing is, variables can have any variable can have infinite number of pointers, but a point a pointer can have only one variable at the, at an instant without getting it modified. Okay, now let's see some regulations and stuff as to how pointers can be uh, made. Okay, now this module part, you just ignore this for a moment. I'll explain you guys this in a minute. Okay, now uh, if you want to write, if you want to uh, make a pointer, make a pointer and use a pointer in your program, there are there are two conditions you have to satisfy. Number one, uh, the variables that you are uh, for which you want the pointers to be associated with should have and should the compulsory should have the keyword target now if this if this keyword target is absent then these variables cannot be pointed to by the pointers that's the kind of a general rule that's kind of a rule in fortran which you have to follow second okay and if you want to declare a pointer okay all you have to do is that after the data type you just add this keyword pointer pointer and that's it once you do that then it's simple then it's fixed then what you can do is that uh, that pointers are ready to point towards certain variables that's it and there's 
another another kind of an implicit rule called as a zero rule meaning it's kind of the basic rule what is what does this say is this data type as for the pointer as well as the variable should be the same if you want to if you want to mix and match they do not work and also because of this rule the size of the variable the size of the pointer and the target should also be i mean pointer and the variable should also be the same at least on the same order that's what it that's what i mean okay i'll explain this in this example see uh, the real value r the real dimension um, array r1 okay which it is this actually it's a three dimensional array with 10 rows 10 columns and 10 pages whichever you call it or 10 heights whichever you call it or 10 levels okay okay all of these values all of its values are set to the value 8 okay and now if you want a pointer to r1 okay a real valid pointer to r1 then the pointer should also be real because this is real and the dimension uh, it need not be 10 cross 10 cross 10 but even if it's 10 cross 10 cross 10 i think it doesn't matter what it should be is that it should have it should have a row column and as well as a level it should it should be three dimensional that's it the size of it it doesn't matter because it gets allocated automatically according to the pointer sizes get allocated accordingly uh, to the size of the variable is getting pointed to so it's three dimensional okay the dimension should match that's more important the value of the value of the dimension need not be the need not be the same but the order of the dimension should match so this is like a third three dimensional matrix so this pointer is again a three dimensional three dimensional pointer so dimensions are matching so they work fine okay suppose if you have a two dimensional matrix matrix then the pointer should also be two dimensional if it's one dimensional the pointer should be one dimensional if it's zero dimensional like these the pointer should also be zero dimensional so these are the four rules the data type should be the same the di- number diamond the number of dimension should also be the same okay the variables to whom you want to point should have the attribute target the, if you want to make a variable a pointer key, use the keyword pointer and then how to associate them see the thing is we told in the beginning of the de- in the beginning of this tutorial i told that pointers uh, store the address of a variable okay now how do we make sure that uh, you know one pointer is associated with a variable it's simple fortran allows this uh, uh, allows this operation using this compound uh, symbol equal to greater than equal to greater than so if you write p1 equal to greater than x1 what it actually means is that you are linking the pointer p1 with x1 okay now this is how you call linking now the reason why they use this is because it's something similar to an arrow right hand fa- uh, with an arrow facing the, the with the arrow head facing towards the right okay it's like that so p1 is actually pointing towards x1 by its definition point it's so it's acting like a pointer so it's uh, intuitively speaking Uh, intuitively speaking is a pointer that's why they give this symbol that's why they give the symbol equal to gla- equal to greater than so it's intuitively show see you can intuitively see that it's pointing towards x1 that's the reason okay now that being said this is how you make the point this is how we make the pointing okay so this is how you know point uh, pointer to a target okay like that p2 is ta- because of this p2 is pointing towards x2 and p3 is pointing towards x4 now to show that uh, you know x4 integer x4 over here cannot have a pointer okay because uh, cannot have a pointer let's count let's uncomment this statement and run this okay see x4 does not have this target attribute so it behaves as a normal variable so if so this cannot be pointed to towards it cannot be pointed to now let's see this if i were to compile this it throws an error state in the compiler throws an error stating that error pointer assignment target is neither target nor a pointer so it means you cannot point so it means you cannot point towards x4 so this statement is not possible on the other hand for the sake of curiosity let's see whether you can point let's see whether you can point p4 to p3 meaning i'm using a pointer to point to an another pointer which again is pointing towards another variable let's see if this is possible compile this yes apparently yes it works so if i were to compile build and run this uh 
yes it works i'll explain you guys what this is a minute so meaning uh, po uh, a pointer can point to another pointer a pointer can point to another pointer so this is valid so this is uh, valid though we're not using it this is valid and then let's see uh, we'll get back to the previous statement p4 uh, less equal to greater than uh, x3 okay now to show that uh, uh, p3 is pointing towards x3 and p4 is pointing towards x x3 to show that both of them have rights over it have rights over it okay uh, we'll see this example we'll see how this overwriting and stuff happens i'll show how this happens okay now uh, if you see x1 is 10 x2 is 25 whereas x3 is it, does, it doesn't have any value yet yet okay x4 will not be used in the program so far will not be used in the program and uh, let's see p3 and p4 are associated with x3 and ptr underscore r1 is associated with r1 now what I do is that I set P4 to be 4, 5. Now that's funny. Now P4 is already a, a pointer. Now how can it store a value? Let's see what does this mean. If I set P4 to 5, okay, and then, and then I'm just, you know, copying this. Yes, I'm just copying this, printing this on the top, uh, printing this on the top, and then I'll copy this as well, okay. And then and copy I'll copy P uh, P three as well. Okay, I should have copied these three simultaneously. Fine. Now with this, let's see what happens if I were to compile. It just throws a warning stating that an X four is not used. That's okay. Build and execute this. Okay. Now watch. Now watch. Um, this is the first print statement. If I set P four to be five x3 becomes automatically 5 now that's funny because i didn't ex i didn't set x3 5 right now how is this possible this is because the pointer when you set a value to the pointer it automatically sets the value of its variable as well we already told you in the definition right pointers can access the values of it i values of the variable itself like that like that okay now because of this okay since P3 is also, since I modified P4 over here, P3 is also pointing towards X3, okay? Now, if P3, the value of P3, okay, P3 will point towards X3, so if I were to print the value of P3, it will print the value, it, it's, it, it finds in X3, so which is again 5, because P4 sets the value of X3 to be 5, so P3, when you print the value P3, okay, it just gets the value from X3 and it prints it, so it becomes 5. And then P4 is 5, so it's as it is now what happens is that now let me print uh, let's look at these since x1 and x2 are predefined okay let's see the value of p1 and p2 as well so if x1 is 5 x1 is 10 p1 is again 10 quite natural x2 is 25 p2 is 25 quite natural and now what i've done here is that i've reset the value of p3 now p3 uh, i mean what i've done is that i said p3 to be 255 now let's see how this works if i said after I said this, uh, these ex statements get executed. Now, if I were to come over here, since P3 is 255, it what it does is that it also access, it also modifies the value of the uh, term x3, uh, the variable x3. So because of which x3 becomes 255, P3 becomes 255, and P4 also becomes 255. So this is a clear cut indication that you know pointers. The, uh, the, that the multiple pointers pointing to the same variable have equal rights to modify the variable content so this also this is an advantage as well as a disadvantage the advantage is that if you want to uh, you have multiple uh, variables pointer variables or normal variables to available for the same memory location in the me for the same memory location to uh, uh, express so instead of if i want to use x3 i can instead of x3 i can use the pointed name itself and so on okay that's an advantage disadvantage is that i have to be very very cautious as to uh, how the data types are used how the variables are matching suppose if i were to conserve the value and uh, you know in some process i somehow include p3 or p4 we use the pointers directly what happens is that 
uh, one change uh, changing the value or modifying the or using one pointer and manipulating its value can manipulate the value of other point uh, the value of the other pointer as well as the memory so i have to be very very cautious in that regard okay that's it and now that's that's the that's the that's this part and now looking at the next thing is that real pointer now let's look at this three dimensional pointer i said pt and i said r1 to be 8 throughout in this matrix and so what i did is that i have pt underscore r1 to be pointing towards r1 okay now if i print r1 1 comma 1 comma 6 it prints to be 8 okay and pt underscore r1 is again 1 comma of 1 comma 1 comma 6 is again 8 so if i were to replace this in right any other index it will also be the same it will also it will point towards the same value as that of r1 for the same index that is okay so so what i have here is that i have a pointer which accesses the value of r1 so instead of r1 i can use pt underscore r1 instead of it since something like a representative for the pointer can act as a representative for the variable that's it okay now let's look at an important concept called as associativity okay now i let i let's i just keep this uh bash script along along bash shell along with it the result along with it because this will be useful to look at okay i'll explain what associativity means see see we say that p1 is pointing towards x1 p2 is pointing towards x2 this is associativity meaning p1 uh, there's a connection between x p1 and uh, because of this pointer expression p1 and x1 are connected because of this pointer expression p2 and x2 are connected because of these two expressions this expression and this expression this follow me cuz this expression and this expression p3 p4 x3 are are associated with each other okay now what uh, to check whether a pointer is associated with a variable okay especially when you have a large large number of pointers and variables may playing a role in the program okay it might be necessary to have a function okay now that function to whether to check whether they are linked to linked to each other or not is called as association associated okay the function name is associated so what it does is that if you just pass a pointer inside it just pass a pointer inside it it will say whether the pointer is a pointing towards if the pointer is pointing towards some variable okay it it will return true if the pointer is not point is not pointing towards any variable it will it will return false okay okay similarly if you pass the pointer as well as a variable okay this is the answer will be true if that pointer is pointed towards that variable the answer will be false when these two are not pointed to these two are not associated okay and then these are all the permutation and combination of all the results okay and these are the permutation and if you want to cancel the association between a pointer and its variable okay there is a simple way to do that and that and that is called as nullify okay this function nullify what it does is that it cancels the uh, association between the pointer and the variable okay now because of this nullify p2 function over here what it does is that it just completely nullifies the connection between the pointer p2 and the value but the value of x2 will be safe and intact okay only the pointer is nullified and its pointer is nullified but the value of x2 will remain as it is and safe so what is this is that after nullif i'm just nullifying p2 over here and pt underscore r1 over here so after nullification if i were to write that if i were to see how the things go by x1 and x2 are 10 and 25 as mentioned above and 25 if you look at the value of x2 which is 25 same as previous so nullification of p2 does not modify x2 so that that way your pointer is nullified without mod- without modifying the value it it was pointing to also p1 is 10 okay p2 is 0 okay p2 is 0 so point this pointer's work has been neglected and it's made 0 and then r1 is 8 that's okay and uh, but if i were to print pt uh, pt uh, underscore r1 r1 of 1 comma 1 comma 6 it will throw me it will throw a segmentation fault error because this pointer has been deleted deleted Uh, I mean nullified because of this nullify stuff or nullify keyword over here. So if you were to uncomment this and run this, you'll get a segmentation fault error. So just guys have to look at that. That's not a big deal. And because of the, and uh, if you guys notice on the top here, P1 and X1 are associated, so it's true. P2 
P1 and X2 are not associated. P1 and X2 are not associated, so it's true. The result is true. P1 and X2 are not associated, so it returns false. P2 and X2 are associated, it returns true. And P2 and X1 are not associated, so it returns false. Okay. Like that. This is how it goes. Now let's check few more stuff. Uh, control D. Uh, association of P1. Let's see. Let's see if the variables are associated. Let's see if the variables are associated. Uh, yeah. There's a problem. Association works for pointers and point and variable combo, but not the variable because variables are not the pointers. Okay. So this does not work. So I'll just comment this out. And then does not does not work so if I were to compile this yeah it's working fine compile this this one this doesn't work okay I guess because of this uh, I mean I guess this will I guess this will this will work work with it now because of this you have an advantage of pointers as you have an advantage of pointers as well advantage of pointers okay now mostly for scientific computation with Fortran uh, only for only in specific cases they use pointer arithmetic but in most of the cases uh, as far as my understanding was as far as i looked at it they have they don't want to use pointers but pointers are essential pointers are quite useful but for but uh, on a large scale people don't use pointers in fortran so that's you have to keep that in mind so it's just a fancy thing to look at okay and one more thing uh, the last topic for today in this tutorial is that uh, pointers are very very useful for creating list data structures or link linked list or something of that sort okay now what is a linked list is some is I'll explain this as a follows okay now uh, I will explain this in a pictorial format okay and after when I explain this pictorial format I'll explain this module part I'll learn and you'll get an idea of what's going on see uh, Okay, forgive me for my extremely crap, crappy, extremely crappy uh, drawing skills. Okay, I do not, I do not have a tablet or I do not have any pointer to draw, stylus to draw this nicely. I just have to draw this with my mouse, so it's a little crappy. But forgive me. Okay, let's say you just have a data type, uh, something like this. Okay, like like this. You create a derived data type of name of some name okay which has a certain set of values so it's a kind of a, so it's a structure so it has certain set of values okay and along with it the same data type it has a pointer pt okay okay so what it does is that you have a the structure with a lot of lot of variables in it at the same time a pointer cons corresponding to the same structure fine okay now let me represent one such uh, derived data type variable as n1 okay n1 is one derived data type of certain type okay i stands for all the variables in it and p stands for the pointer now what you do is that i set all the values of the variables as input of this variable i as some inputs and then using the pointer using the pointer in n1 what i do is that i associated this with another derived data type of the same type n2 okay now p p will this p of n1 will point towards all the variables i okay of data type n2 okay and in this will this will have a data type this will have again a pointer p which will point towards all the variables in n3 n3 okay and uh, this will also have a pointer which will point towards all the variables in n4 which will have a pointer that points to as n5 and so on and so forth you can go on so what you have here is that one der derived data type is linked towards another data type and which is again linked to another data type and so on and so forth so it's something like a list so these are linked and it's linear so one connect to the other another connect to the other other connect to another without any crisscross matching and stuff so this is a linear so this is what you this is linear in nature and it's linked and it fo kind of forms a list because after one 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 set of values followed by another set of values, followed by another set of values, so you have a, like a list-like feature going on. So this is what you call as a linear linked structure, a linear linked 
data structure or list data structure okay this is a linear link data structure so these are kind of very much useful for you know uh, d doing a lot of job especially for especially in uh, applic especially for making applications and operating systems and all for instance uh, let me go to this files if you see uh, let me open something uh, see uh, if I go to my computer okay just for a thought okay home okay I just go to home my folder okay okay but the problem here, the thing is this will be uh, inside home okay inside this root there will be multiple folders over here and each of the folders will point towards and uh, subfolders inside and each of them will have subfolders inside and each of them will have subfolders inside and so on and so forth so what you have is that is that one set of data okay instead of just single pointer you have multiple pointers over each pointing towards one thing but if you take just take uh, one folder and the other it'll have what you have is that you just have a hierarchy kind of a thing this is very much useful for operating system kind of stuff which we looked at okay this is called as a linear link structure this is one example but there are other examples as well that can be explained with and other is other is something called as a circular li circular linked list circular linked list what it does is simple see here in the linear linked list the last uh, the last pointer variable is actually set to null meaning it's that's meaning that you're terminating it over here but instead if I were to point this uh, if they if I were to point this uh, pointer to the f to the variables of the data data type variable n1 what will happen what will happen is something as like this uh, this n1 will have the va will have its own variables and it will be point and with the pointer in it will be pointing towards the variables of n2 whose pointer will be pointing towards the variables n3 and whose pointer will be pointing towards the variable n1 so it, what happens is that you have a chain each of them are linked towards each other so this is kind of something called as a circular list or a circularly linked list okay uh, there can be no I mean I'm not sure whether there are non-linear linked list or not I'm not sure about it but this is again a linked list it's circular okay if you want to form this kind of stuff what you need is a set of variables and a pointer and in this a simplified if you want to make a simplified data data type and a simplified data data type to work all this is like this okay you need one variable and you can have multiple variables like that doesn't matter and one pointer and what you do is that create multiple variables of the day of this type okay and point one to the other one pointer to the other and another pointer to the other and the final pointer to a null and go go like that so this way you can create a singly linked list and then i'll explain there's another concept another kind of uh, thing you can do with these okay the which is very pretty much applicable to you know the file processing management in any operating system see this computer okay has uh, this is this is the for address is actually address is actually if you can see just the slash key if i were to go to home uh, if i were to press control l i guess okay home the address is home okay if you go there the you know, address is uh, root home around and in that if i go to my photon tutorials over here root home around photon tutorials and then you have so much links so at the same time if you go to my computer that's not the only process no, that's not the only thing your home is multi getting divided into multiple places like SRV media mount and stuff so what happens is that you have a certain kind of data type wherein you have multiple pointers each each branching out like each branching out and each of these branches have multiple data types multiple uh, multiple pointers each pointing towards a certain other folder like that so what you have is that you just have something like a linked a linked list but it's having multiple links and multiple bran multiple branches so so the intuitively speaking this kind of a thing looks like a tree and that's what we're going to see this i mean again forgive me for my horrible drawing skills this is called as a tree structure okay you have data type uh, you have some data data type of uh, variable a here you store all the variables and then let's say you have two branches two pointers one pointer or po well, the left point let's call this for come come I mean for simplicity sake let's call this as 
left and this call the left pointer and this call is a right pointer now this left pointer can point towards another data type of b data type variable b and this can point to another data type c okay now each you know b has two pointers and c has two pointers so b can uh, I'll, so I'll, uh, so because of this because of this b can take two more point uh, two more variables c can take two more variables and in turn in the next level you can take eight more you can connect four level four variables and the next level you can connect eight var eight level eight variables and the next level 16 variables and so on and so forth you can branch it and suppose if you want to block them what you can do is that you can uh, nullify them you can uh, attach one of the pointers to the null nullify the pointers and thereby stop them and you have nullifying pointers over here and thereby you know you can just control the number of branches you have okay and this kind of th stuff is best, uh, pretty much essential for you know your file management stuff in operating systems and all and pointers in this regards are very much useful in operating systems i find another stuff or other stuff also if i make for making very large applications and stuff okay uh, uh, this is one of the examples of you know list uh, these are one of the applications of pointers Tr trust me if ever i am not uh, trust me haven't worked with uh, li linked list or linear linked list or uh, circular linked list or branches or trees in my life i haven't worked with them because i mean i never had a use of it so i never and at the same time i never learned about it on my own so i can't uh, give an ex proper explanation if i were to give that it's it will not be you know proper justification to the topic and it's a very interesting topic to look at so if you guys are if you guys are already have an advantage of linked list and all uh, you you will understand this in the better and if you don't if you guys didn't have never used about this linked list and uh, how trees and linked list and all don't worry it's just a con just a concept uh, just a very useful concept but not so useful for normal application but it's just useful for some specific software based applications so you don't have to worry about it you don't have to worry about it and that's and uh, th these are sometimes called as trees and if the tree in the trees if uh, and in trees if one if uh, sometimes these trees can also also be called as binary trees because uh, each tree each value has only two pointers uh, so which you can take only two values at the same at, at the single time so these are these can be called as binary trees suppose if your data type has three pointers it can be a tertiary tree or something ternary tree or quaternary tree if it has four pointers like that and to if you want to make a, if you want to make a simple data type which pointer like that what you need is some data set of uh, characters and two pointers left and right for a binary tree if you want a ternary tree you can create left right middle and something of that sort and so on and so forth and just goes on and on okay that's it about that's all i have for you guys regarding pointers and stuff and uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, this will be very in interesting and useful useful especially for the you know the hardcore programming hardcore programmers and stuff okay uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, i'll see you guys next tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be covering just one uh, we'll be covering two more topics and with that we'll be ending up this tutorial series thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next tutorial see ya